Hey guys, welcome back to another weekly reading vlog. So as usual, I kick off with a currently reading, which should be pretty simple because I'm still reading The Bone Season by Samantha Shannon. I'm on page 242 of this so i've read almost 60 pages since i wrapped up last week's vlog if you did watch last week's vlog you will know that this is a reread for me i'm participating in bonathon which is a read-along that is hosted by ashley from frolic through fiction there will be live shows for each book in this series we're reading the bone season in october my order in November and Song Rising in December. I always struggle to remember the names of these books. And I will be co-hosting the live show at least for the bone season and we don't have a date for that yet. It is going to be early November I believe but I'm really excited to talk about this because a lot of my favourite people are going to be in that live show. So if you don't know what the bone season is about it is a seven book series. Three books have been released so far. The fourth book will be released in 2020 and it follows a girl called Paige Mahoney who lives Lives in a futuristic London that to me is very reminiscent of George Orwell's 1984 in that the government is watching you and restricting the things that you have access to and the government can see pretty much every aspect of your life and in this world there are clairvoyants however it is illegal to be a clairvoyant so they kind of all band together in criminal gangs and Paige is one of the most powerful clairvoyants that is known to exist and because of this she is high up in one of the most powerful gangs of London. Now as I said the government can watch everything that you do and one day Paige is caught using her clairvoyant ability and this is a crime that is punishable by death so of course she is captured and taken somewhere and when I first read this book where she is taken and what happens there was like blew my mind so I won't get into that. As I said this is a reread for me I don't think I'm enjoying it as much as I did the first time around I read this three or four years ago the reason that I'm not enjoying it as much I think is just because this is Samantha Shannon's first book. I have read Priory of the Orange Tree this year and I've read the other two books in this series and I remember when I read this series the first time that I thought that the books do get a lot better as they go along and I think that is just Samantha Shannon's writing maturing. I've noticed in my reread that the writing is a little bit melodramatic in here and also there is a lot of telling and not a lot of showing which is not something that I usually notice because I'm quite a fan of info dumping at the beginning of fantasy novels but with this I'm kind of I'm noticing it so it must be be kind of clunky if it's enough for me to notice somebody who enjoys info dumps. So this is what I'm currently reading. I am hoping to finish this this week. I'm not doing very well with my Bacopoly TBR at all. This is on my Bacopoly TBR and I think I have it in for the challenge to read a book set in a dystopian world but I think this would be yeah this will be the first book on my Bacopoly TBR. I have read three books so far this month but one was one that I rolled over from September that I was currently reading as we came into October. One was my punishment book for not finishing my September Bookopoly and one was my buddy read with Jade for the month, none of which were on my proper Bookopoly TBR. So this will be the first Bookopoly book that I finish and yeah that's how October is going for me reading wise. So I do know what I'm going to be picking up when I finish this. I'm going to say when and not if. I am going to finish the bone season this week. It's happening. And that will be Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. I did want to have that done by the end of the week. It's not going to happen. I can say for sure that I'm not going to finish Ninth House this week. But I would like to at least make a start on it because this Saturday I'm going to the Lee Bardugo signing in Leeds, which is part of the, what is the name of the book? I've literally just forgotten what the book is called. Ninth House. The signing that I'm going to is part of the Ninth House tour. I've never met Lee Bardugo before, so I'm very excited, but as it is the Ninth House tour, I would like to have read Ninth House. Like I said, not gonna happen, so the best I can hope for is that I have at least started it by then. So that's where I'm up to with reading and also my reading plans for the rest of the week. I'm not gonna get much more done than that, to be honest. As you guys probably know, I have moved house, sat in my reading room, which is still an absolute state. We have a mirror over here. That's my TBR cart that I am dying to assemble, but there's no point right now. And my reading so far this week in terms of getting the house done, or this room specifically at least, I want to paint the rest of the walls. So at the moment, these walls are painted gray. This wall is half painted. The chimney breast is still red so I want to get the navy paint on that and then yesterday I put the undercoat of white on these walls so I want to get the grey on those. As well as that I think I'm going to be filming my November Bookopoly on Sunday so I would like to get some curtains because these blinds are all broken. I've broken them all and the curtains that you can see 
here, here, here are decorative so they don't actually close and my house actually goes straight onto the main road the reading room is the front sitting room and while it's not too bad because we have like half frosted glass if i stand in front of my bookshelves which are there and i'm standing up so like i'll be reasonably high up i'm not like super tall or anything but if i do that and then turn a ring light on i might as well just hang a sign on top of my head that says look at me guys on the street i'm doing something weird which it's not really what I'm going for. So I want to sort out some curtains, but it is a bay window and that leads to complications. So we'll see how I get on with that throughout the week. Once again, something I would like to get done this week, but I may not be able to, but I really want to before I have to film a proper video in here. Like I really want to. And once again, not really a priority, but I do want a throw for this sofa so it will match the decor when everything's painted. And this mirror up here, I want to spray paint the frame copper because the accessories, etc., in this room are going to be copper. So you guys probably don't care too much about that and you will see me actually doing these things throughout the week but that is my plan of action not reading wise so i'm gonna go now because my dinner should be ready soon curtis is cooking he's been cooking a lot recently and it's great because i used to cook every single day so i'm absolutely loving my break from cooking so i'm gonna go have some dinner i'm gonna go do some reading and then i'm going to get the first coat of gray on these walls because i just want this room to be done so that i have somewhere nice to sit and read Hey guys, so I've made a lot of progress in this room today and I am a little bit shook. Let me find some better lighting. There is none in here right now. Um, yeah, I'm a little bit shook. So I put this bookshelf up, which was one of the ones that was in my background in my videos when I filmed at my dad's house. But I will show you the books I have left to put on shelves. These guys down here, so they're just normal paperbacks, but there are some travel guides and stuff in here. The travel guides will probably go back down there. Um, I'm unhauling that. And I'm also unhauling Six of Crows because I have the collector's edition. So just ignore the rest of the crap. These are the books that I have left to get on shelves. And then I just have my collector's editions of Harry Potter. And these are too big for the shelves that I have. It's like, you won't have seen these before. These are like a fancy edition of Wuthering Heights, The Bane Chronicles, and The Complete Works of Shakespeare. So this is all I have left to get on shelves. Oh, and my Game of Thrones, but they'll go on a special shelf eventually. But this bookshelf is completely full. This bookshelf has a little bit of space on it here for like a couple of smallish things. But this one still has two empty shelves. Essentially... I've nearly got all of my books on shelves and I have room for more and I'm shook. I can't remember the last time I had room for more books. So um, just need it, just need a moment to absorb that. The rest of the progress that I've made, I have, let me flip you again. Obviously, as you saw, I got all this wall painted yesterday. Don't know what I'm doing with that mirror yet and there's my tripod. I moved the sofa over here. It's going to, this is where it's going to go. I'm gonna get a new rug though, cause this one is awful. <laughs> Put the lamp in the corner just for now. There will be something else over there eventually. Cause like I said, I'm putting shelves in here. And over here, I want a desk, like a corner desk that goes like this. I also have, I don't think you guys have seen this yet. I have this fancy vintage lamp that was in storage at my dad's. It's got like tape marks on it that need to come off, but that will be going in here because it will match my color scheme and I really like it. Curtis doesn't, but I'm just gonna say it has no taste. And then this box just has my ring light and stuff in. That's my TBR car, which I will be getting up as soon as possible. I have all my subscription boxes still there. They're still full as well and need unpacking. And then, hey, I just gotta paint this and get some new curtains and then we're done.
So yeah, I'm feeling pretty pleased with myself. It is 10.30 now. I have read a little bit today. I'm not sure how much, maybe 60 or so pages again, but I need to go finish editing <laughs> last week's vlog. I also need to unpack the box. I think it's there that has my library books in because some of them I need to take back and manually renew tomorrow, which is a pain in the ass, but that's what I get for not reading my library books. So I'm gonna go and I'm going to finish editing the vlog sort them library books out and then get some sleep. I did have a nap this afternoon actually. I had a two hour nap, which is why I'm full of life right now. But yeah, I still kind of need to go to bed at a reasonable time. So I'm gonna go get on with some of that stuff and I'll check in with you guys probably tomorrow. Hey guys, it is Wednesday evening now and I've had a day. So you know when I said that I was moving and I said there were gonna be tears in these vlogs and that haven't been. I've been doing really, really well. I've been dealing with everything emotionally really, really well, which is strange because I also said, which is still true, I don't like change and I don't like uncertainty. And there has definitely been a lot of that. But today, today we had the tears. I've just had like, just, I've had a day. I don't think it's a secret. <laughs> My laptop at the minute is really, really old. And I have been looking to buy a new one. I can afford, well, I want a desktop computer. And I've always wanted a desktop computer since I realized that my laptop needed upgrading. And it was fine until I got my camera. And when I got my camera, my file size was a lot bigger. My quality of videos was a lot higher. And so my laptop started to struggle to process the videos. So I decided that I needed to upgrade it, but I wanted a computer because you get a lot more processing power in a desktop computer. I wanted to get one of those. But when I was living at my dad's, I didn't have the space to have a desk to put a desktop computer on. So I was like, I need to move out before I can buy a computer. There's no point me just buying a laptop in this short space of time that I'm going to need more processing power when I did know, or I was at least looking to move out. So the, the problem with that is that now that I've moved out, I can't necessarily afford a desktop computer because while I can afford one, like I have the money to buy one, I now own a house. So if something drastically goes wrong, like if the boiler breaks or something, I need to have money in reserve to be able to fix that. Essentially, the, the point of this is, finished editing my vlog at 1 a.m. I had a nap yesterday evening, I think I told you. So I stayed up a little bit later to finish editing that vlog. I set it to export and it took eight hours which is standard for a vlog but that meant that when i was leaving for work this morning my video wasn't ready it still had like 40 minutes export time left on it which meant that i couldn't do what i normally do which is set it to upload while i'm at work and then by the time i'm on my lunch it's finished uploading and then I can like sort out all the cards and all that stuff. So my morning didn't start off great. So I was planning on putting the vlog up when I got home. Now the issue that we've had in the place that we've moved to and it's a really weird issue because I lived in a tiny village before the only sort of public amenity that we had in the place where my dad lives is a pub. There wasn't even a shop and we had fiber optic internet we had super fast fiber as well so it was like slightly faster than basic fiber so we didn't even think that would be an issue when we moved to where we live now because we moved to a town it's a very small town but it's a town and the shops like two minutes walk away i can go to normal shops as well not just like tiny corner shops so we didn't think that the internet would be an issue but the internet is an issue because there's something strange about the lines that are connected here they're not normal internet lines and so we can't have fiber. Now, this is just, it's gonna be a whole long story, but you need to know about the day that I've had. Essentially, we did some research and there is one company who are, or I don't like them at all. There's one company that essentially monopolize the internet service and the phone service in Hull. And because they are the only provider for Hull, they can charge whatever prices they want. And their prices are ridiculous. Like they still offer more than a normal internet service package, like in price for internet with capped usage. Like I have never, since the days of dial up and when I was a kid and I didn't understand internet, I have never had restricted internet where you can only have like download so much per month. It's always been unlimited and my parents never Never paid that much for the internet. So they're charging £40, which is almost the same as my phone bill, just for the privilege of having unlimited internet. So we didn't want to go with them at the moment, but they are the only company who are going to install fiber optic lines in my area and it's going to be expensive, but we need that speed internet. But they're only doing that in January. So right now we had to go for a package that has no contract so that we can opt out in January. And we're with a good provider of 
internet now and it is cheap but it's not fiber optic so today i had to go to my dad's after work and uh just i don't really want to get into that to be honest and just all that stuff because it's not something i enjoy talking about even with people who are close to me but essentially i went to my dad's and as i've been telling you we have been moving gradually so there was still some stuff there there's probably one car load left of stuff there now after the stuff that we've moved today but i i went to my dad's and I went into my old room and he has packed everything that I left and like cleaned the room and everything. There's absolutely nothing left in it apart from the sofa that I left behind. And it's just, I don't wanna cry, I don't wanna cry. Um, at the moment, I kind of feel homeless because while I have just bought a house, I am living in a sea of boxes. I just, this room I showed you yesterday, it was almost a livable space and it is now full of boxes because I can't go to my dad's just to pick something up that I need. My dad is not willing to give me the time to unpack the stuff that I already have here. So it's just, it's, it's a lot, it's a bit much. And today I was feeling overwhelmed. The living room is a dumping ground. We can't even get to the sofa at the moment because the boxes are just being dumped in there. The boxes I brought today I don't even know what's in them because I haven't packed them. So I don't know what room they should be in. I have no idea what's in them. I obviously know some of the stuff that I left behind, but it was stuff like I had half a wardrobe of clothes there. And then there were bits for my business hanging around. Um, my Bacopoli board was there. He'd put like the cards and stuff and the dice and the counter for my Bacopoli board, just like in a bag. So like everything is just disorganized chaos right now. And yeah, the living room is just, it, it's a mess so like I don't I don't I, I feel I don't have a home if that makes sense I just have a house full of boxes right now also when I got there he wanted me to go through my mum's stuff and take my mum's stuff that I wanted which um I wasn't emotionally prepared to do today and it's one of those things where he just wants to donate everything to charity so if I want something I have to take it right this minute and I have to go through everything right this minute so I went through my mum's wardrobe I took everything I wanted and everything else is going to charity so if there's something I didn't see that I wanted tough shit it's gone so I had that to deal with I got home back to the internet thing I set my video to upload this was probably, what time is it now? We're looking at three hours ago and it's on 30%. So my vlog isn't going up anytime soon. Hopefully it will be uploaded by the time I go to work tomorrow and I can sort it out at work, but I don't know. I um, had a video that I needed to film today. It's a try chapter tag, you should have seen it by now, but I haven't read the chapters, so I needed to film that stuff. I wanted it edited and exporting overnight tonight. That hasn't happened. It's 10.30 and I have yet to read a single chapter of those books. I'm gonna do that in a minute. And let me just get, I made a cup of tea. And so I came home, I have outstanding candle orders. I went to make some of the stuff for them. We're having issues with having stuff delivered at the minute because as you can imagine, like I order a minimum of 10 kilos of wax at a time. So that's a big box. And my jars, I order in quantities of at least 90. Now the problem that we have is that we are at work all day in the week and the neighbors are at work and there are a few couriers like if it's delivered by royal mail then we can go to the sorting office and get it if it's delivered by a courier then we do not have a hope in hell's chance of getting that parcel because we're not into accept it the neighbors aren't into accept it they don't deliver after like i think they've been calling at like 3 p.m we finish work at 3 30 and there isn't a drop-off point so curtis is going to have to go to leeds at some point this week to collect some of our parcels that have just been returned to the nearest main depot so I'm running out of candle stock. I've ordered some of my candle stock, but as the orders have been coming in and I've been moving, I haven't been keeping an eye on stock. So I've been ordering stock that hasn't arrived yet. The stock that's gone to Leeds, which is over an hour away. And yeah, so you can say that I had a mental breakdown today because it's just, it's been a real fucking day and I feel like trash as well as that because I've been doing so much every single day. I am exhausted and I tend to hit a wall around Tuesday. As I said, I had a nap yesterday. That isn't a frequent occurrence for me because I'm busy over the weekend. Like obviously normally you work through the week and then you recharge a little bit at least at the weekend. I mean, I'm always busy, but <laughs> um, I, I 
do take things a little bit easier at the weekend. I sleep more for one. So on Tuesdays I'm hitting a brick wall and I had a nap yesterday which did help but then I only had like five, six hours sleep which seems like a lot but you guys know I've been struggling with my mental health. I'm doing a lot better but that is tiring. Like you're a lot more tired when you're not feeling great mentally. So I've been needing a lot more sleep than five, six hours. And yeah, so I'm exhausted and everything just pissed me off at once today. So yeah, it's it's been a day and I cried a lot, which isn't ideal. On a side note and also a little bit of good news, is this tea ready to drink? It is. So that side note and the good news is not that my tea is ready to drink, although that is a great bonus. When I went to my dad's, I picked up my October Owl Crate. So I need to film that tomorrow as well and hopefully get that up on Friday. It's not going to be Friday. Oh God. What is life? I also picked up my Dark Dawn Crate from Aluma Crate, the special edition box that they did. I ordered in the second wave of the boxes. So it was a late dispatch, but that is here. I don't really want to unbox that yet because at this point, there's no point me doing a video because tons of people already have. I kind of want to do it on camera because I, I really like the items in that box. I didn't order that box. I just ordered the fake Crate one. And then I saw an unboxing on Instagram and I was like, no, I need that box. So I have that. I don't know what I'm going to do unboxing wise with that. I'll have to have a think about it. But I don't want to unpack that right now because I'll be unpacking it to put it back in the box until this room's sorted. Like I have full subscription boxes there that I need to go through um, and get all the stuff out. I'm just having a terrible day. I'm having a terrible day. So I have, I have made some candles with the last of my stock. I'm supposed to be receiving jars tomorrow whether they come, what career they come with, when I'm actually going to get them is a whole other issue but I need them to process orders and then I've also run out of wax but my wax is royal mail so hopefully that won't be an issue but I came home and I had so much to do and I couldn't really do anything like I couldn't do the try a chapter tag because I was in the middle of like a, a screaming crying breakdown which is not ideal for filming and I couldn't do the candles because none of my orders can go out because I'm missing like one candle from every order until this stock arrives oh also as well as like just to feed into my day Curtis nearly crashed his car this morning because we were going to the sorting office the sorting office is only open till 2 30 which is I don't know if you know what a sorting office is in the US is where your it's where your mail goes if you miss the delivery they take it to the sorting office but ours is open from 8 a.m till 2 30 so if we go we have to go before work so we went to pick up something that was supposed to be delivered yesterday but obviously we weren't in it was some fragrance oils for me and the sorting office is on an industrial estate and somebody literally pulled out without looking and Curtis swerved missed the front of their car by like this much and we ended up on the pavement on the other side of the road so um it's just a good job that something wasn't coming the other way at that time um, but yeah, <laughs> when I say I've had a day, I, I really mean it. So I've made myself some tea, which having a really overwhelming day, I struggled to pick a tea because I have quite a large tea selection, even though I drink a lot more coffee than tea. I, I like buying tea, it's a weird thing. And I just looked at my teas and I was really overwhelmed, but then I decided because it's so late, I should probably go with chamomile, which actually narrowed it down to one choice because I only have one chamomile in stock at the moment. I need to restock my chamomile tea. Oh, I, I do actually have a reading update for you guys. I'm not gonna say too much, but the bone season, I'm on page. 396 so I have like 55 pages left of this I will definitely finish this tomorrow hopefully as long as I don't have another meltdown but yeah I'm gonna go <laughs> drink my tea and read the first chapter of some of these books for my video and I'll check in with you guys tomorrow for sure because I will have finished this and hopefully tomorrow will be a better day So we have a little bit of a change of scenery today and let me tell you why. I know that I've spent 
the entirety of the last update moaning about stuff because I was having a bad day. Have things improved? No, I had a, I had a better day yesterday. Uh, yesterday was good, but I didn't have time to finish the bone season, so I didn't come and update you. But today, the first thing that happened is, as you know, I was moaning about getting things delivered, and I said that like hopefully my jars would come. Well, I actually intercepted my delivery of jars and I had them redirected to a pickup point and I had them, at the time that I put the postcode in, <laughs> to have them redirected. There was nothing coming up in my area, so I had them redirected to a place in the town where I work so I could go after work and I could pick them up. That delayed the delivery by a day, so they were supposed to arrive today and I went to pick them up and they hadn't arrived yet. And when I go on the tracking, it just says, sorry, we're running late. So I'm going to have to make a trip on Sunday now to get those jars because I really need to get my orders out. So the next thing that happened is that tonight we have decided that we are going to a haunted maze event thing and we kind of decided on a whim we only found out that it existed yesterday so I don't really have time to paint my chimney breast or anything so I thought you know what I'll do my old crate unboxing when I get home so I come home I put my makeup on because I'm going out anyway so it's like two in one you know makeup for going out makeup for filming i've been using the box all my filming equipment all my tripods and my ring light and everything is in to like kind of as a table so i cleared all that opened the box got my ring light out couldn't find the adapter no idea where it is because as i said the other day my dad's packed some boxes curtis has packed some boxes i've packed some boxes and if the ring light cable isn't with the actual ring light i have no idea where it is so i rang my dad anyway and that's not my dad's so on sunday now i'm going to have to go to the town where I work to go and get my jars and then I'm gonna have to go to my dad's to get my power lead which means I'm gonna end up with a whole ton more boxes that are just gonna kind of hang around as well. So um I just finished filming last night. I finished filming the tri chapter tag that I was doing and I filmed some clips in the reading room with the main light on. As I've edited all that, like I reviewed the footage and I saw that the lighting wasn't all that bad so I thought cool I'll just use the main light is only an unboxing and this lighting will do for this video. So I thought that I would just turn on the main light. I just had it on because I was looking through the boxes but I'd come out and I turned it off. So I thought I'll put the light on, I'll let the bulb warm up so that the room is at its brightest when I sit down to film. I blew the bulb. It blew the bulb. So um, there's no light in there now and I can't really go and change the bulb. I don't have any bulbs to start off with um, and I can't really change it because it's too dark for me to see what I'm doing and also for me to like figure out what light fit it fits in it is and stuff. So that's why we're in the living room because apparently I'm destined to live my life in darkness. So aside from all that, this is just a huge vlog of moaning. I do have actual vlog stuff to share with you. So the first thing I have is that I did finish the Bone Season by Samantha Shannon. I was reading the chapters for the Tri Chapter Tag yesterday, so I didn't finish it yesterday. But I did finish this out today. I gave it four stars. However, as I've said, the writing is a little bit melodramatic. There's a lot of telling as opposed to showing in this, which were kind of things I picked up on. The romance aspect of this kind of goes from not to 100 in that one of the characters especially does not seem to show any interest really at all in the other character until like the making out under a stage which it was kind of random and I stand the romance in this. I really love the romance in this. I think the romantic scenes are well written to my personal taste anyway, but please remember that Sarah J Maas is like the height of romance for me. That's the shit that I'm into. So I do really like the romance, but just the, the way that it kind of was initiated was a little bit weird. And then we have a whole ton of conveniences like in the end scene which is the majority of what I read was like the big conflict wrap up end scene so everything's moving pretty fast just conveniences and things moving really quickly and stuff so on like the technical writing of this book probably three stars but personal enjoyment because like I said I really like the romance this book is incredibly addictive I think it's really quick to read when you get past the first 100 pages and you get to grips with the world it was even quicker for me to read because this is a reread and I'm already familiar with the world. I think I said last week that this pretty much throws you in at the deep end plot wise but because I am at least a little bit familiar with the world with having read it like it was two years ago so I don't remember it all but I'm familiar enough to kind of pick up on what's going on. It's just super addictive and 
super compelling and even when I'm reading bits that I acknowledge are kind of slow and not a lot is happening I'm just like turning pages and wanting to carry on and find out what happens even though I already know. I can't say for sure right now but I'm pretty sure that the second and third books are much better written than this so I would probably say if you've read this and you're not a huge fan to stick with the series because it does improve in my opinion but obviously in the coming months as I will be reading both the Mime Order and the Song Rising I will be able to give you a little bit more information on that aspect and whether I think technically this is a good series and whether it improves, you know what I mean. So I obviously read this for the Bonathon and I also read this for Bacopoly. This was to fulfill the challenge to read a book set in a dystopian world. So I have started another book. I don't know where I'm up to because I borrowed the, I do own a physical copy, but I borrowed the ebook from my library because I don't have an ebook copy of this, but I do now. So let me just figure out where I'm up to. Okay, I think I'm up to page seven, but I started a Dance with Dragons part one, Dreams and Dust by George R.R. Martin. This is the first half of Dance with Dragons which is the last currently published book in the A Song of Ice and Fire world. You guys know I'm hosting a read-along of this series. The live show for this will be sometime around the end of November. Still need to get like a solid date for that set up. The thing with Game of Thrones is that you can't really explain the actual core plot of the series without spoiling what happens right at the end of the first book but this is essentially an adult epic fantasy series. It is multi-perspective. The world is really expansive it draws on a lot of folklore, legend, mythology and British history and the kind of crux of it is that we have a lot of, let's call them high houses, we have the high houses of this country which is Westeros who are all kind of backstabbing each other and fighting amongst each other but then aside from that we also have people in other countries who are rising to power and then there's also a threat in the north. There's a threat in the north, I can't, I'm not doing a Jon Snow accent right now, you don't need to hear that but there is a threat in the north that's kind of overshadowing everything but people don't realize it is and they're ignoring it even though that's like the real big threat. So yeah I've read seven pages of this I haven't even finished the prologue so I can't give you much information right now not that I could anyway because this is the fifth book in a series but I have at least started this one. Also worth noting because I don't know when I'm going to give you another reading update I'm gonna say it's probably gonna be Sunday but if I have time tonight when I get back from the haunted maze which I probably won't because I'll be doing other stuff but if I do have time I will be starting Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. There's no point me really prioritizing this now as the signing is tomorrow and if I read anything it's gonna be like one chapter but all I know about this is that this follows a girl called Alex Stern I think and she is a high school dropout as far as I'm aware and she gets a scholarship to Harvard. Is it Harvard? Yale. I always say it's Harvard but it's Yale. She gets a scholarship to Yale and the secret societies. I've heard that this is very dark, lots of trigger warnings and it kind of has dark academia vibes, supernatural vibes and mystery thriller vibes and this is on my bookopoly TBR to read a mystery slash thriller because I do feel like that is a big big enough aspect of the plot. So the last thing I have for you before I go and get ready to be scared to death is an Amazon delivery. I have ordered this. I know what this is. There should be two books in here. No there should be six books in here. I tell a lie. And essentially I think I'm going to be doing my November book off TBR. I'm going to film that first and see what happens. But I think I will be doing a separate Believeathon TBR. If you are unaware, Believeathon is the one month long readathon that Gavin is hosting throughout the entirety of November. I'll put a link to his announcement video in my description box and his channel will be linked down below because in case you haven't noticed, I link the channel of every person who I mention in every video and I think I mentioned Gavin every vlog at least once. So um, if you ever need a link to Gav's channel, it's probably always in my description box. But he's hosting this one month long readathon that is centered around reading children's books. I don't read a lot of children's books and that is pretty much just because other books not hold my interest more, they capture my attention more. But there are quite a few children's stories that I own and quite a few that I want to read. But I've picked out a book for all of the challenges apart from one, apart from two actually. Um, one of them I can easily fill. I just don't know what I'm going with yet. And the other one is the challenge to read a book that deals with real world issues and I don't want to read a contemporary because I'm only really interested in children's fantasy. And I know that a lot of children's fantasy books 
will deal with real world issues but it's kind of one of those things where as it is a fantasy story it doesn't advertise that in the synopsis it's only when you read the book you find out what real world issues it deals with so i'm not picking out a specific book for that challenge but one of the other books that i read throughout the month will no doubt cover that prompt but when i did set up my tbr there were two books that i specifically wanted to read two books that i was very excited to read as soon as gavin kind of was letting me know what was going on with believeathon because before he did the announcement he was like showing me his progress so far in his prompts and when people say children's books I'm always kind of drawn to the children's section in Waterstones just because I find that the covers are so beautifully illustrated and colourful so I've always wanted to read more children's books just because I love how they look I think they're like excellently packaged they're just so beautiful but I obviously want to read more than just children's books and with children's literature I don't really know where to start in terms of modern stuff but when I think of children's literature there's obviously all that stuff that I don't really know a lot about. Gavin has gifted me a couple of things and they will be on my TBR but when people say children's books to me I think obviously Harry Potter although that's kind of across all age groups and then I think of the children's classics that I want to read so Alice in Wonderland, Winnie the Pooh and then the two books that are in here. So let's um Oh, no. <laughs> let's open her up. Okay, so first, I'm, I'm really interested to see what these look like. So the first thing that we have is a box set. The box set was only £10 on Amazon, so if you are wanting these, they're really, really cheap. I did only want to read the first book, but it was like five or six pounds for the first book or £10 for the box set, so I just got the box set. And that is the entire Mary Poppins series by P.L. Travers. I think the challenge that I'm using this for is a book set in the past. But I've never read these, but I absolutely loved the movie. My mom introduced me to Mary Poppins, Bedknobs and Broomsticks, and Chitty Chitty Bang Bang when I was really, really young. So I always felt like really connected to Mary Poppins. Until I watched Saving Mr. Banks a couple of years ago, I did not know that this was a book series but obviously Saving Mr. Banks is about the process of P.L. Travers releasing the rights to her books to Disney so that was the first I knew that this was actually a book series and I have wanted to read it but like I said I don't read a lot of children's books it's something that I've been looking out for in charity shops and with children's classics as well you do have like a wide range of really beautiful editions but funnily enough with Mary Poppins there doesn't seem to be like a huge amount of beautiful editions these are kind of the prettiest ones that are all stripy so yeah and then Mary Poppins I'm assuming you guys all know what it's about but it follows two children who live in a household I think their mother this is from the movie probably completely different in the books but their mother is a suffragette and their father is a banker these children are really unruly and all of the nannies quit and one day Mary Poppins who is I don't know what Mary Poppins is she's like a magic nanny who flies with an umbrella and has like a carpet bag that's like bottomless and she comes and changes their lives essentially and they don't want to love her but they do because she's Mary Poppins and I love her too and I'm so excited to read these books interestingly like if you guys haven't seen Saving Mr. Banks I would 100% recommend it because see the thing is with that movie is that Disney made Mary Poppins and in Saving Mr. Banks P.L. Travers or the person who's playing P.L. Travers which I think is Emma Thompson complains about the Disneyfication of her books and how they make Mr. Banks into a villain and she's just not happy with them like Disney-fying it. The problem with this though is that my information is coming from Saving Mr. Banks which is also a movie made by Disney so the real story of what actually happened has also been Disney-fied so I'm in some kind of paradox here but I would highly highly recommend that movie because she really resisted Disney buying the rights. Walt Disney was like hassling her for years to get the rights to make Mary Poppins and she had like all these demands and stuff and she hated the process, she hated Walt Disney Disney and eventually she did enjoy the end product or the film leads you to believe that she does but if the film is at least somewhat correct she did draw on her real life and her relationship with her father which was honestly quite heartbreaking. She absolutely idolised her father and he was not a great man. I think he was an alcoholic but she absolutely worshipped him and she wrote him 
into the books as Mr. Banks and as somebody who's grown up with that movie and seeing like the real story once again if it is real because it could have been Disney-fied they really it hits it hits deep you know so anyway that was um a lot of time talking about Mary Poppins but I bought these and the other one I've got I did just get the first book in this series but it's not just the first book Ooh. <gasps> beautiful there are many different editions of this there are really fancy editions but i may want to read the whole series at one point now the box set for this was a little bit more expensive there was a paperback box set for 37 pounds or there was a hardback box set for 75 pounds now i didn't want to commit to the box set with them being quite expensive with me not knowing if i'm going to actually enjoy the book so i did just buy the first volume this has three books in it. I don't know if I'm going to read the full volume for believe -a or whether I'm just going to read the first book but there were some really beautiful editions of this as well but with having it in mind that I want to read the whole series I wanted the one where I would be able to get the full series in the same set if you understand what I mean. So even though the box set for the hardbacks is really expensive I thought as it was just a one-off purchase I would get the hardback because if I do love it I'm gonna want like the prettiest edition but if I don't love it I don't want to pay £75 for a box set. And that is Oz the Complete Collection Volume 1 and just just appreciate how beautiful this is there are much nicer editions of this there are lots of editions of the wizard of oz but this is one of the least beautiful ones but it's still absolutely stunning it's not too pretty without the jacket on but the spine is still pretty gorgeous so once again i grew up with the wizard of oz the wizard of oz is one of the first movies i ever remember watching it's a movie that i used to watch every christmas i do still watch the wizard of oz at least once a year now i have also read wicked and i do love the musical of wicked probably because of the connection to the wizard of oz wicked as a book not great i gave it five stars if i reread it i probably wouldn't and the musical i just love the musical so the wizard of oz once again if you don't know the movie was made in 1930 something i think or maybe 1940 something and judy garland plays dorothy who is a girl from kansas who is swept up in a tornado and taken to the land of oz the characters in oz do parallel the characters in dorothy's real life and when she's swept up in this tornado her house is dropped on the wicked witch of the east and everybody's rejoicing because she killed the witch even though it was an accident and she just wants to go home so all of these people say follow the yellow brick road go to the wizard and he will grant your wish and they give her the ruby slippers that are on the feet of the wicked witch of the east and her sister the wicked witch of the west is really angry about that because she wants the ruby slippers and so she starts to hunt dorothy down the thing about this as a movie at least it leaves you questioning whether any of it is real because obviously there's a tornado and the characters do parallel characters in dorothy's real life so with how the ending kind of happens it leaves you wondering whether Dorothy ever did go to Oz and whether that ever happened or whether she kind of just hit her head and was concussed in the tornado which is kind of depressing to think about but that's that's this one I don't know whether the movie follows an arc of a few of the books in the series or whether the story that the movie follows is just the wonderful Wizard of Oz I think the Wizard of Oz the movie was made by Metro Goldwyn Mayer so it won't have been Disneyified but I don't doubt that they elaborated the plot a little bit but in this particular volume we have the wonderful Wizard of Oz the marvelous land of Oz and Ozma of Oz and I'm really excited to read this. I'm really excited to read both of these. I know I have a square on my book upload board that's like read one of my mum's books and I'm I'm sad that my mum didn't read these to me as a kid. She did read me a lot of Enid Blyton books like The Famous Five and The Secret Seven and Mallory Towers and the standalone books that Enid Blyton wrote but I'm really sad that she didn't read me these because The Wizard of Oz and Mary Poppins is something that she introduced me to and I think I'm going to feel really close to my mum when I'm reading these but I'm also I think I'm going to be quite sad about it because it would be something that I would talk to her about you know like oh I read Mary Poppins book and this is how it relates to the film and stuff so yeah it's going to be an emotional experience reading these I think I have this one in for the challenge I'm spoiling my CBR but this one I think will be for the challenge to read a book with animal companions so that was a hella long update sorry guys so sorry but I am gonna go and get ready to go out now I will take my camera with me i probably won't be allowed to film in the actual mazes but i know that there is a fair there there's street food and they have like fire breathers 
fire breeders, is that what they're called? Like kind of carnival sideshow y performers and things. So oh it's raining. There won't be fire breed there won't be fire breeders if it's raining. So um that's sad. But I'm gonna go and get ready for that and I'll check in with you guys at some point. You might just have a montage now through till Sunday because it's leads tomorrow, but I guess we'll see. college uh, long long ago um, I we had a post office that was off campus and uh, back in the, those days we wrote letters <laughs> and we rode in a horse and carriage <laughs> and, um, I had gone to get my mail and it was my first year there hello <laughs> hello yeah. hello <laughs> Hello. You okay? You okay, hon? <laughs> Hello. 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 <laughs> We're not focused. Oh, there we go. Hello. Ryan? Yes, and also part time cinematographer. Are you through the rest of the Okay, guys, so we are about to take this mirror off the wall to be able to paint the chimney breast. So um, I thought I would film this experience because if I smash that mirror, then catching it on camera is going to be the only good thing about this experience. It did really pop off. Fuck. <laughs> oh, this bitch ain't coming out as easily as the other one did. Don't tip, please don't tip. Can we get it off yet?
Hey guys, so it is Sunday evening now. It is just past 10.30 and I'm about to go to bed and start editing the vlog. But before I do that, I should probably wrap up the vlog. I have just got out of the shower. I don't have too much to tell you guys. I haven't done much reading at all. Today, well, last night slash this morning, I went to bed really late last night and I slept for nine hours. So I only got up at midday today, which is not something I usually do. I'm usually up between nine and 10 on the weekends, unless I'm going out and I have to be up earlier. But I caught up on so much needed sleep it was honestly great like i haven't got as much done today as i wanted to because of that but at the same time you know that i do a lot and i could do with more sleep so the lee bardugo event last night was really great because lee bardugo is such a big author and because i think there was 200 people which is probably about the same as jay christoph but it was a much faster event the talk was really good she's really funny i did not know how funny she was and i actually like her a lot more now not that i disliked her it's just with authors i don't tend to interact with them very much or anything like that so I didn't really know about much about her as a person aside from that she likes gothic spooky things and I I do really enjoy her books I've given most of them four stars I think and one three stars which was the first book in the Grishaverse so I do really enjoy her books but she's just honestly she's so funny she's great I absolutely love her and it makes me wish I loved her books more even though I do actually really enjoy them I've just I've never given one five stars yet speaking of Lee Bardugo I might as well do my reading update while we're on this topic I'm only on page 48 of Ninth House so I can't even really tell you what it's about yet I'm midway through chapter three I was reading chapter three while I was having my coffee this morning when well this afternoon when Curtis came home because he went for a night out last night and he came home he was with a friend so I stopped reading and then we were just talking for a little while I haven't picked this up yet all I can really say about it so far is that it's set in Yale and it follows a girl called Alex Stern who was a high school dropout she got a scholarship to Yale because she can see greys which are ghosts and she is in a secret society apparently I know from the event that all of these secret societies apart from the one that Alex is in are real they are real Yale secret societies Alex is in the ninth house which is why it's called ninth house and that house has kind of been created to make sure that the rest of them behave because they all dabble in different types of occult magic stuff I think but the first two and a half chapters the ones I've read are all world building we're getting to know the two characters Alex and Darlington and yeah that's all I really know so I can't really tell you much about that. Yesterday as well it was really great catching up with Ryan. He actually bought me a graphic novel which I need to show you guys. I was in Travelling Man which is my favourite comic book store. There's, it is a chain but there's only four or five I think across the country and I have like a loyalty card with them so I tend to buy all of my graphic novels from them or at least the first volumes and then they usually have really good deals on manga where it's three for two so I tend to get all of my manga from there. But I was in there and I saw this absolutely stunning graphic novel and I really wanted it but obviously I don't need any more books and as well as that with the painting nearly being done I am a little bit short on money because the next things I'm going to be buying are things like rugs which are expensive and I need a desk which is going to be a little bit expensive so I said to Ryan can I have this as in like please give me gratification allow me to buy something that I don't need and he said what you want me to buy it for you and I was like well if you're offering. So he bought me the first volume in a graphic novel series that is called Die. Now look at this cover. I don't know if this is a Traveling Man exclusive cover because I have bought a Traveling Man exclusive cover before for Isola. So I know that they exist and this is just absolutely stunning. It's foiled and the art in this. I'll just flip to one of the first pages and show you the general art. It's not as colourful as I normally go for but it is absolutely beautiful. I don't know if this is an exclusive cover because when I looked it up on Goodreads, this is not the cover that was shown, but it was just absolutely stunning and I fell in love with the artwork. I'm really picky about artwork in graphic novels. That's why I don't read too many because I have to like the art. And it's also the main reason that I haven't carried on reading Rat Queens because I don't really like the art moving forward, which is a shame because I really like the storyline in that graphic novel series. But this first volume is called Fantasy Heartbreaker. So this is called Die, but it's not Die as in Death 
dead is die as in dice and this follows six people who were teenagers in the 90s who disappeared into a fantasy role-playing game I'm assuming with it being called die it's a role-playing game like Dungeons and Dragons and it is now around 30 years later and five of them have re-emerged now one of the people who worked on this graphic novel worked on the wicked and the divine which is a graphic novel series about gods and goddesses I believe which has absolutely stunning artwork it's one of my favorite graphic novels artwork wise I haven't read it but I know that the art is beautiful because I always pick it up and flick through it but I've heard that the story isn't that good in that one which is why I haven't read that but one of the people who worked on this it's Kieran Gillen did work on the wicked and the divine and it kind of seems Jumanji-esque and also reminds me a little bit of Stranger Things with the Dungeons and Dragons type plot and also with it being set this is the 90s Stranger Things is the 80s but you know what I mean so I'm very excited to get to this one and I'm also happy because I will be filming my bookopoly on Tuesday and if most recent purchase comes up it's going to be this one which very exciting and also it's a nice short read so I think that is all I really have to tell you I painted the chimney breast earlier I don't think it needs a second coat which is good it, I got really good coverage and with it being so dark it hasn't left so many spots behind like little white spots because I can see them a lot easier but I will go and touch it up tomorrow because I do have to touch up the gray walls as well because I masked them so that I could have like clean navy lines but um in a couple of places where the tape wasn't stuck down properly the blue has gone through so tomorrow or Tuesday or whenever I will go and just touch up those grey bits with a brush but that room is looking absolutely stunning now I'm honestly I'm so happy with it and I can't wait to get everything put away and get a rug and stuff for in there I'm just I'm so happy I've also packed up some candle orders this evening if you do have an outstanding order with me I am running a little bit behind on a couple of them with obviously I've been talking about it this week with my difficulty to get my parcels and actually have stock so I'm gonna have to be a little bit more forward thinking in the future about getting stock enough in advance so this doesn't happen but obviously this is a transitionary period and it's just a little bit of a struggle but hopefully I will be able to pick up those jars tomorrow and get the rest of my orders out I'm really annoying me it's really annoying me at the moment as I said earlier I didn't get to do as much as I wanted to today I did want to get my TBR cart assembled so that's something that's going to happen early next week I'm going to put it in the fireplace like in the center which I think it's going to look really nice there so that will be happening early next week and we'll assemble that and everything and then I do have a TBR cart tour planned come in early November straight after my wrap up I think so you'll see my wrap up and then my TBR cart tour but you know we'll we'll talk about that when we get to it but that is the end of this week's vlog guys so I hope you've enjoyed it I don't feel like I've made a lot of progress this week but I know when I'm editing I will see the progress I think what happens is that in my head it feels like things happened a lot longer ago than they have and then when I'm editing I see like all of the progress I've made which is really really good but yeah that's the end of this week's vlog. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you made it this far, I know it's been a long one. Please also don't forget to like this vlog if you liked it and subscribe if you wanna. And I'll catch you guys next week. Bye. Oh, you bite your friend like chocolate. You say you will go where nobody knows. With guns in under our petticoats. We're never gonna quit it, no, we're never gonna quit it, no.